I guess it's time to finally review the Benchmade 15020 Bone Collector. Another knife we've had for a long time. Again, about three years. I know, it's crazy. But it's not a secret knife here in the Nut and Fancy Project. You've seen it lots. I think it's shown up in about four other hard-use folding knife reviews. I used it as a reference point, and it has a lot of upsides. So why wait three years, Nutton? Well, good question. I think you know the answer. Guys who follow the knife show here in TMP. You guessed it. I'm not stoked on the blade personally, and you probably know why. We'll get to it, trust me. But I know a lot of people, a lot of subscribers here in the Nut and Fancy Project are, and that's why I'm doing a tabletop review. To serve those guys and gals, TMPers. So here we go. To the point, folding knife review, Nut and Fancy style, philosophy of use. You guys know I don't like, for particular EDC use, a really heavy, chunky blade. Okay? But there's a lot of people that do. So I'd say the first philosophy of use would be, for those people, EDC, utility knife. They have no problems whatsoever carrying around, for instance, not this knife, an 8-ounce, 4-inch blade for everyday use. I know people who do it. They love it. They like the substantial feel of a big knife, a thick knife in their pocket. This is a knife for you. If you like that reassurance of that hanging onto your pocket, rock on, brother, sister. You'll love it. Not me, though. For instance, not set up. What do I have today? Oh, EDC knife today is a first-gen Spyderco Dragonfly with, how you doing? Nothing fancy homemade jimping. This is not the version that had a jimping later. I kind of railed on that in the initial review of the Dragonfly. So come on, man, put some jimping on it. Getting sidetracked. So I did it. I actually got it right on this one. Uh, but that's my EDC blade for utility tasks. In other words, a lightweight, easy, and fast to access utility knife. That's just what I'm carrying around today. Very light. And then for tactical use, also a spider coat, just by chance. Kind of a family pairing. Translucent Manix Hall of Famer here in the Nut Fancy Project, BD1 Steel. So I just show you that for reference. This is kind of a tactical carry, BDC carry, and both of these together will weigh less than this. Should be perfect for you though, if that's what you like. I would say no to tactical use. We'll see why when we talk about the handle. Absolutely not. And then I would say yes to collectability. This version is still available if you act quick. This is the G10 milled G10 with a very cool rib cage pattern on it. I actually love the look of these handles. I think I said that when we looked at it in some other reviews. That's POU as I see it. Collectible. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here we go. To the crux of the problem, you guessed it. Nothing fancy. Why do you not like this blade? Because it's heavy. You knew that. It's six ounces. TDH, man. Too damn heavy. Yeah, too damn thick, too. It's just too thick. That's what she said. I know. I knew you were going to say that. It is, though. It's just, for me, not a tactical blade. It's too slick. It does not have good ergonomics for me in a tactical POU, so I'm not willing to take on six ounces. That being said, in hand, the thickness for a lot of people will feel right. In other words, it's, you know, adequate. Great balance, though. There I said it. It's and we'll see a couple competitive options before I end the video. The steel in this version of 15020 is D2. You guys already know about the steels. I mean, here we are, a uh, freak 2013. You're steel experts, right? I'm just a user with steel, not an expert. Uh, I like D2. It's not my favorite choice. Usually, it depends on who puts it together too. Um, there's some really high quality D2s that we see coming out. Lion steel would be a good example of it. The German D2s are usually pretty good. It's a semi-stainless tool steel with high hardness. Again, that's what she said. I knew you were saying that. <laughs> I know you guys so well. I think this measured out 60 to 62 on the Rockwell scale. It might make it hard to sharpen. I have not found that to be a case. the case with good D2 when it's put on a favorite sharpener I have, the Edge Pro Apex. 
I don't think I sharpened this one and reprofiled it. This is just a factory edge on that. I did carry this around, used it a little bit, not a ton. So D2, good steel. Uh, would I prefer prefer S30V? Uh, not really, because it's just going to add a lot to the cost. Maybe 154 CM. I love that steel. You could do CPM 154. Great steel, but that too, all the powdered metal technology steels add cost. 3.4 inches uh, in length. I love the sheep's foot blade. I love it. 0.125 inches in thickness. It has a strong tip on it. And actually this knife, you guys already know this, it's just like a, a really high quality griptilian on steroids. A G10 griptilian, which has been upsized a little bit. That's the bone collector. There's the logo on that. I did sign this one. It's going to go up for sale so we can get funds for more blades. We always buy them. This one is 251 of 500. That's cool. Told you it's collectible. I got to tell you guys this though, and it kind of drives to the whole motif of Bone Collector. I think it's pretty cool, but I also think it's overplayed a little bit. Now, I don't do hunting equipment reviews, but there's a lot of hunting stuff out there that wears the bone collector motif. In other words, kind of a predator motif. You're going out and, you know, just harvesting stuff. Predator kind of like logo, not exactly. And I just see it as being a little bit overplayed, the bone collector. So I got to be honest with you, for me, it's kind of a turnoff, just overdone. But I love the blade, sheep's foot. It's flat ground from this portion. The relief edge is kind of small. If I slap that on the EPA, I'm going to back that relief edge up just a couple degrees. How about speed? That's a 12 millimeter deployment hole in there. There is a little bit of handle occlusion happening right here. I didn't mill it out though. You could though. If you milled it out with like a bastard file, <laughs> then you'd have easier access. And you could actually make it look really good. Just profile it with 400 grit sandpaper. That was a sucky deployment. Let's try that again. The speed is outstanding. I didn't demo it well the first time, but you know what I mean. It's a Benchmade. Big old stop pin. Solid lockup, and it features our beloved Axis lock. Boy, I love that McHenry Williams lock. It's just awesome. Awesome. Ambidextrous, of course, uh, the knife with the Axis lock, as you can see, and the 12, mil 12 millimeter deployment hole. So that's cool. Lockup and strength, superb. No no criticisms there. The handle construction is a criticism, however. One, it's a little bit squared for me. I don't think it's super ergonomic. Luckily, it does have milled liners. Where's my flashlight? Here it comes. Check that. Great job, Benchmade. He, they milled it out aggressively. So they're actually making the light, uh, the weight as light as they can for the design. Those are hardened stainless steel liners, probably 420 stainless steel. Uh, G10 with rib cage pattern. We talked about that. It looks cool, but yes, a little bit squared off. Hand filling, yes, but we ultimately lack traction for tactical PLU. We do. There's nothing there. We have that ridiculous attempt that sometimes Benchmade does with liner jimping. It is ridiculous. There's no traction. There's no thumb ramp. You could put skateboard tape up there, but nothing. The handle really, to me, doesn't give it. I would not, if I had a choice, put this in a defensive philosophy of use. And it's wide. That's 0.74 inches wide. It's a chunky knife to carry. I know, some guys like it, some don't. So that's pretty much a rundown of the ergonomics. And then we got the phallic Benchmade clip. I don't like that clip anymore. Maybe one time I did, but it's just, dude, come on now. Let's, let's reprofile it just a little bit. A little bit will protrude from the pocket. Uh, it's not reversible for tip up, tip down. Thankfully, it's tip up, which is my per preference. You know that. But if for lefties, again, this is a great ambidextrous knife. You can reverse it to that side. Big old lanyard hole. Excellent. And it's not flow through construction. You actually have a, I think it's a 7000 series aluminum backspacer, backspacer on that. Hand uh, blade centering is perfect. Handle retention, since it's an access lock, is perfect. Again, the sucker just leaps out. Durability is phenomenal. And on we go to competitive options. Here comes a Hogue Allen Elishawitz EX01. This is a smaller version. 
Model number 31 or 34178. I didn't show this in my EX01 review, by the way. I didn't. Uh, I'm showing it now, though. So it's not a secret blade. At least you got that going for you. Great knife, though. I like this one. And this one does not self-lock like the biggest, bigger one I talked about. I said when you deployed it, you could, you know, the locking button here, you know, would automatically actuate. I hated that. This is a great knife, though. And it's lighter, a lot lighter than this one. Blade's not, well, I was going to say it's not quite as big, but I'm wrong. It's actually about the exact same size as a 15020. That knife is about $165, though. This Elisha Witz, this Hogue, I, I should say, it's expensive. 4.3 ounces, 0154 CM steel. More expensive, cool knife, horrible jimping on top. At least on the blade portion, I think I said that. Here comes a family competitor, the Benchmade Triage 915. This is a manual one. Great knife, and it's still lighter than the 15020 at 5.2 ounces in 680 stainless steel. This is a black inversion. Boy, is that good looking. Comes razor sharp out of box. Has a rescue cutter in it. That is extra special. Non-locking in this 915 triage. They have that new version where it is auto-deploying and locking. I would prefer to carry this knife over that. Let's look at the thickness. Triage is thinner than the 15020. There you go. And then, last but not least, I'm just showing a couple competitive options. The Benchmade Gretillion 550HG is this one. 3.8 ounces, a lot lighter. Same family resemblance in the blade. Let's compare them side by side. See what they looks like. Almost identical blades, actually. Almost identical. I like the finish on this one a lot better, though. Not the bone collector motif, but you see the striations on the grind with that. I generally don't like it when Benchmade does that. Thickness, though, let's check it out. The grip is still thick, you guys know that, um, but this is thicker still, but it's much lighter, much cheaper too at around, I don't know, 60 to 70, depending where you go. That's an advanced review. Told you to be short.